So timekeeper ready? Yeah. You said 25? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Omar, we will be on your time. Danny, you start when he begins to talk. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Omar Denali. And before we get started, I just want to mention that I'm kind of sick. So if I cough or sneeze or anything, I'd just like to ask you guys to bear with me a little bit. Um, I'd like to say thank you. Welcome to everybody. Um, and thank you for showing up to my senior defense and taking time out of your day. I really appreciate it. So without further ado, welcome to our beautiful Garden Coast journey through uh, Dojo. Now, first thing I want to start off with off the bat is a little bit of something that defines me, which is music. Now, music is something that's always been there for me when times got tough and anxiety really overcame me. And it's always been something I could fall back on when times got sad and everything. And it's, it's been something that's stuck through me since day one and will continue to stick through me throughout the future. Um, something else that's been there for me throughout day one, obviously, is my family. Right here you see this is me and my mom, and right here is my dad. These two people are probably one of the most important people in my life. They've done everything that they could to try and provide for me and make sure I live a comfortable life, even when they were struggling themselves, and I really appreciate and love them all for that. This is my brother right here, my oldest sister, my second oldest sister, my um, youngest sister, and then my niece and nephew. These two people are um, what a lot of times give me a motive to want to strive for success, as I love them with all my heart. Um, some people who have been there for me also since day one is my second family. Every single person you see here is very dear to my heart and I love them so much. I just want to put a little bit of emphasis on the big picture you see right here. This is Ozzy, Scott, and John, and these people I got close to around sophomore and junior year. And I don't want to get too much into detail, but basically we were all there for each other and we kind of used each other as uh, motivation to become more of men and start taking responsibility for our actions and start actually trying in school and making men of ourselves. Um, now, I want to jump into my thesis. As I entered the beautiful, dark, and twisted path that Dojo Luby um, lunged towards me, I became conscious of a foreshadow pertaining to my life and what I would be facing. I came into the school a very shy and anxious person who was always afraid of speaking up when necessary, which had a huge impact in terms of making decisions and being a leader when needed. With that being said, as years came to an end and a new beginning started, my utilization for reading, writing, speaking, and active listening began to excel, along with my adaptation to new technology and the ability to respond to change. Now, first thing I want to jump into with is a quote, and it's by um, Kanye West, and it's for my favorite song, Runaway. Though it's a very small quote, it means a lot to me. I'm so gifted at finding what I don't like the most. Now, this quote, again, it's really short and stuff, but it pertains to how I've always, I came into Dojo Libby as a freshman, as someone who carried the characteristic of always being able to pinpoint down things that I didn't like and things that I hated to do, rather than trying to find enjoyment in some things. And this was all my mindset until come around the CAM project, which is complementing alternative medicine. Now, just a little bit of background on the CAM project. We were basically um, assigned into groups of four, and we were to do a healing circle to present to our class. And basically, it consisted of the allopathic physician, which is who I was, and that carried the big role of explaining basically the Western medicine type of healing that the other person, the patient, would get. There was also the traditional healer who would give them the more of an alternative medicine type of healing path, and then there was an um, immigrant health specialist who would give them the type of healing that they would get in Japan, which is where ours took place. Now, the mindset I carried along with this project coming into it was more of just memorize what I research on the internet, you know, utilize all the researching I can do on my computer, and just present it to the class, and that's it. I didn't really have a motive to like learn anything about it, as I really didn't. This whole entire mindset kind of worked out, because we did end up um, presenting very well, but it didn't work out for me because I didn't learn anything and I didn't feel like it was something I should continue doing as I did have a problem with getting really nervous during presentations. So the pressure of memorization sort of got to me and I knew something needed to change. And so when the Night at the Medical Museum project came along, I knew I needed to start making things different. Um, to give a little context for Night at the Medical Museum, we were put into groups of three or two, depending on how many people were given to you. You were given a certain time era and either one to two diseases that you had to put a lot of emphasis on and figure out all the political issues that were going on. And um, I was supposed to be the expert for HIV, oh, oops, for HIV and AIDS, and um, we created a physical display board to present to the teachers as well as to open house. Now, for me, again, I knew something needed to change when this uh, project came along. I didn't want to just get some information off of the internet and just whatever, get with random partners and present. I wanted to actually be able to use my time to collaborate with my partners, get to know them so that we can make a wonderful presentation. And I actually took the time to do a bunch of research and actually learn about HIV and AIDS so that once we come to open house and present to everyone, I wouldn't just be reading, like pay, reading some words off of a PowerPoint. I was more 
teaching other people as well as learning more myself. And I was very proud of myself as I did execute very well with that type of mindset and I was able to present in that way. And I was able to, again, learn a lot and spread my, lo my knowledge to others. And though this was a really good um, mindset and type of way of presenting that I learned and adapted to, I knew I wanted to take it a step forward come the Medical Abuses Project. Now, a little bit of background for this. The Medical Abuses Project was, we were given a certain um, time of history that sort of got erased and mine was using Unit 731, and it was a time where a bunch of extremely unethical things were going on as there were prisoners put inside of a prison, but instead of just tr being treated like a normal prison, they were, being, um, they were being experimented on and cut open just so they can further advance their uh, medical field. But again, that wasn't okay because that's not what should have happened to them, and it slowly just continued to get erased in history. Now. My, I felt our job as a team was to collaborate with each other as well as communicate to the class when we did our presentation on what, what's going on in Unit 731 and why it was wrong. Rather than just creating a PowerPoint and reading it to them, we tried our best to create a bunch of different activities and to so much as to interact with them. And we even like played a few games and we gave them a test and they did very well, which makes me really <coughs> proud. And I was able to say that I did spread the knowledge that I gained from this to other people. And I worked with a bunch of great people that made the process easy to change from how I used to present to how I do now. And I just think it was pretty awesome and I am really appreciative for the opportunity that I got to be able to work with an assignment like this. Now, I wanna jump into another quote, which is my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Now, what does this quote mean? For me, I feel I've gained a passion for presentations and presenting in general as the four years of Dojo Libby I've been attending went on. Um, but that's not the only thing I have had a passion in. I've actually had something ever since I was a little kid. I've always loved like playing video games, working with, working with technology and computers. And I remember in eighth grade, I saved up to buy my first computer. And going into ninth grade, I knew I wanted to somehow use it with school. So come around good eats. Just a little bit of background on this. Our goal as the four people we were assigned to was to um, explain to the um, it would to explain to the people mostly at open house, which was my goal, as to why they shouldn't be eating fast food. Our goal wasn't to just tell them like, listen, stop eating fast food because, being realistic, sometimes parents get lazy and kids start craving McDonald's or something, and they just <laughs> want to go and get some easy food and cheap food. But we told them like, listen, if you're eating fast food like seven days a week or something like that, try your best to slowly cut it down to maybe three to four times, or two to three times, and slowly just a few times a month. And I felt that was a good mindset to have as someone who is just a freshman. But to put a little more emphasis onto what I, my goal was for this project and my um, assignment, I was to edit the video, and that was my job, because everyone turned to me, I was the only person who had the type of technology that could really handle editing a video. And I didn't think of it as like a burden, a burden or anything, I thought of it as a great opportunity to try and use my new computer. Um, we did make the video and it turned out really well. I look back at it now and it's kind of embarrassing to look at it because I do these little cheesy pop-ups and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I also look back at it as a time where it was a huge stepping stone and to where I realized I wanted to further my career in the future with computer science or anything that had to do with technology. Though I was still just a freshman and I didn't know too much about it or what I wanted to do, it gave me a good idea as to what I wanted to do. Now, through Dojo Libby, we did a lot of editing for videos such as in Spanish and English and a bunch of different stuff. And I had all this experience in the back of my head and I just feel thankful to have an internship at Alpha, the Alpha Genomics Laboratories to be able to apply all that knowledge that I gained to something that actually happens in the real world. This is my brother-in-law, he's the CEO of the company, that's why I was able to um, be able to get the internship there. And I just felt really thankful because they helped me step, put my foot into the door and like give me a little bit of knowledge as to all the different branches of technology that computer science holds with it. It's not just you're gonna go and you're gonna learn one thing and that's it. You can ask anybody, computer science continues to advance and that's what I love about technology, continuing to always adapt and get newer and newer. You never just stay with the same thing. But my adaptation for technology really came into play come around the International Economic Summit, also known as IES. Now just a little background on this, we were given a certain country of our choice, and ours is Nigeria, we were a D3 country, and our goal was to overall show up at the summit day, excuse me, our, to show up at the summit day and um, 
give them our, we were to trade different resources to try and better the economy of our own country. We did do okay at this at the summit day, although we didn't do the best or win or anything. I feel I want to put more emphasis on the motion graphic that I was assigned to. Now, going into the motion graphic, I didn't really know that it was going to be much different than any other video I've ever edited. Usually, we just film a bunch of clips, put it together, add some humor, and that's it. <laughs> Little did I know that the motion graphic was pinpointing each frame and creating uh, just a, an amazing and very serious video that was supposed to be sort of an announcement as to what was going on in our country, which was HIV and AIDS. Now, I didn't, again, I didn't know that that's how it was going to be, so I waited the last minute and I procrastinated, which probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, and I had to search for a certain program that I'd be able to use to make this specific type of video because you can't just use any type of editing software. But I feel, well, I ended up pulling through and making a really good video and teaching myself how to use that um, program. And I just think that's going to be really cool to use in the future now that I know how to use a different type of editing software rather, just, rather than just using something to put all together. And um, I think it was also really cool to have this opportunity because in the computer science field, again, everything continues to advance and it continues to adapt, or you have to continue to adapt to the newer things that happen. And I just think it's really cool, again, to have this type of opportunity to have something like the motion graphic. But though I was able to adapt myself to something like this, it was kind of harder for me to do it with the Waves Lab. Now, the Waves Lab was basically, we were given a tuning fork and we were to hit it on a hard surface and create a sound wave. It was picked up by the Vernier microphone and transferred to the Logger Pro program on this um, Nava Yazdan's computer. And basically it gave us this right here, this whole entire graph, and it gave us between the first um, 0 0.05 seconds what was going on with the sound wave. It took a while to get the perfect um, image of a sound wave, but basically our goal was to get this sound wave and calculate what the frequency, amplitude, and the uh, wavelength was with all of this. Now to calculate the amplitude, we learned that you get delta y right here and you just divide by two. It's as simple as that to get the frequency. You just, again, you simply just count each one of the waves and that's your frequency. With something like the, the wavelength, you had to just highlight the whole thing and it would give you the wave.